All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about low pass filters. Uh, what we have here is a nano VNA test board kit. Uh, I'll have a link to this in the description. It's just a kit that you can buy and then you put together. What's really cool about it is that you can squirt a signal in here where it says in and you get a signal out where it says out. And depending upon what you have configured here, uh, you will get a different response to your signal, or your frequency based off of the circuit design. So what we have here is a very simple low pass filter circuit design um, that is in a Pi network or a Pi filter, as you'll see that called. Now, I got the idea uh, to do this after a kit build that I did on a little CW keyer called the Pixie. So let me just go ahead and drop this down here. And uh, here you can see this Pi network and you have two capacitors, 470 picofarad. And then you have an inductor here. Uh, that's what this L2 is. And that is one micro Henry. So I went to my parts box and I got parts that were based off of those, uh, those measurements or standards. And this is what we have. So what we're going to do uh, now is we're going to connect this up to a nano VNA and we're going to check its frequency response. And then I've got other parts here and uh, we'll pull these parts off. So here's a couple of different inductors. Here's some different capacitors, different values. And uh, we'll hook some of these up and we'll, we'll check the frequency response. And then what you'll be able to see is, is how you can adjust or tune your low pass filter. Let's get after it. Okay, just so folks can see what's going on, here's our test board. I zoomed out a little bit and uh, we have a signal coming in from our nano VNA here and then coming out. Here's the nano VNA. Um, this is calibrated with a short open through and load test. And uh, what we're going to do is use Nano VNA Saver on the computer because it's a little bit easier to see or to read. But here is our channel output that's coming through here. And then here's our input. And uh, we did the full calibration in Nano VNA Saver. So let's go ahead and switch over there and uh, see what's doing. All right, here you can see Nano VNA Saver. And what we have is, is we have a sweep that uh, we calibrated at 0.5 to 50 megahertz. And that'll get us uh, pretty good coverage of the of the HF bands. I know it's not gonna cover six meters, so just everybody calm down on that. Uh, I have the sweep set up to be in 10 segments. So it's 10 mini sweeps uh, connected into one larger sweep. And I do that so I can increase the resolution of data points that I take across the, uh, the spectrum that we're gonna be measuring. Also, I set the nano VNA for 201 data points. Now for a chart, we have an S21 gain, which is a through test, which I already covered is going to go out the nano VNA through our test circuit and into the nano VNA, and we'll be able to measure the response. I'm going to remove myself from the screen, and that way we'll be able to see nano VNA saver a little bit better, less distraction for me, and uh, we'll be able to look at our frequency. Okay, looking at our chart, uh, what I'd like to point out is, is that I have a red marker, and that red marker is at 3 dB down. That's considered the roll off or the effective bandwidth of a filter. Uh, right above that marker is called the shoulder, below that marker is called the skirt. And typically you want a steep skirt, and this is relatively steep. Uh, it's, not the, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Uh, some of the things that you can do is you can add more components to your filter, making it more complex, and then you can tune the steepness of that skirt. But anyhow, if you take a look here, our frequency is at 11.0948 megahertz. And, uh, that is the response of this particular filter. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to take a look at the filter and change out some components, and then maybe we can take a look and compare uh, results here. Okay, so I've removed the inductor from our test circuit, and what I want to do is I want to measure that on this LC meter. So what I want to do is connect my LC meter, and I can see that it is zeroed out when my alligator clips are connected. And that's because I did a calibration on this to make sure that any capacitance or reactants or inductance that uh, would be introduced by these alligator clips is accounted for. So what I want to do now is I just want to go ahead and I want to take my inductor and I want to just put it in here. And there you go. I'm right around 1.25 microhenries. So that's close to what the specified range was for the inductance value for the inductor in the circuit that we were looking at. So let me go ahead and remove this one. And I just happen to have some other inductors sitting around here. Let's see what this one is. And I honestly don't know because I have a pile of them here. I think this is one as well, but we'll find out. 
<clears throat> so that's a little bit closer. We don't want to we don't want to use that one. Um, let me grab this next inductor, and this is the one I think that we're going to use in our circuit to test the response to see if it's how different it is. So when you can see this one is two point two seven two. So it's almost double the inductance value. So let's get this out of here. Let me go ahead and insert this into our nano VNA. And this should be fun because I don't have my glasses on. Voila. Okay, now we're going to go back to nano VNA saver and uh, see what we got. Okay, we're back at nano VNA saver and this is our reference sweep so let me go ahead and hit the sweep button and what we should see now is the new sweep based off of the uh the new inductor so as you can see uh it has a steeper um the roll off is less gradual but it looks like the skirt might be a little bit steeper maybe it's close i don't know but let's go ahead and adjust the uh the marker there and then that way we can see uh, what the difference is in terms of frequency and we're adjusting, we're adjusting, and we want to get as close to 3 dB as we can. So it looks like we're at negative 3027 dB, and the frequency here is 6.7 megahertz. So that would tell you that uh, you can adjust this uh, frequency response based off of that inductor, or you could do it based off of the capacitors. Let's take a look and uh, see what, what happens if we do that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the new sweep as our current reference. I'm going to go switch out those capacitors. Let's take a look there, measure them, and see what we got. Okay, we set our meter to capacitance mode, and then you can see we're actually getting a reading now. So what I want to do is I just want to hit the zero button to calibrate that out. And once I get okay, I let go, and now it's not measuring any capacitance. So let me go ahead and uh, remove this capacitor from our test circuit, and I'm going to go ahead and connect it here, and we're going to see what the value is. And this is 467.9. So if you remember from our schematic, we were looking for around 470, I believe is what that was. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the other one was. Because you do get some variance in, uh, in your components, 464. Uh, so there's some of that variance I talked about. It's not a big enough deal to be worried about, but it is something. And uh, let me go ahead... And out of our parts board here, we have a couple of different capacitors. I'm not sure which ones are which. I'm just going to pull these blue ones out. And we're going to do a quick measure and see what the capacitance is here. So 771, um, and that's significantly higher. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop these into our test circuit. And then uh, we're going to come back with Nano VNA Saver, and we're going to see the delta in response. Okay, here we are back in Nano VNA Saver, and this is our second reference sweep. We've just switched out the capacitors. Let's go ahead and sweep and see what we find now. And if you take a look at that, we have even a steeper skirt that taken taken place there. Let's go ahead and adjust for the three dB point and see what we have. All right, we've adjusted for negative 3 dB down. We're at 3.009, which is as close as we've got. And the frequency here is 5.6. So making those changes, we've actually cut our, our roll-off frequency in half. And then you can see the skirt here is a little bit steeper. All right, folks, and I think that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.